If you're new to Power BI and you're wondering how to use slicers, in this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know to get started using slicers in Power BI and create better reports. First of all, what is a slicer? A slicer is a Power BI visual that allows us to filter data. Visual is short for visualization. This means an interactive element on the report page that displays data. Some other examples of visuals are bar charts, donut charts, tree maps, and tables. And what is a filter? A filter restricts the data so that the report shows only a subset of the data. Let me show you what I mean. Imagine we have a freelance business and we want to get a better handle on our finances. Here we have a report showing our expenses data. There's a column chart showing how much we spent month to month, a bar chart showing how much we paid each vendor, and a donut chart showing how much we spent on each category of expenses. We also have a card visual showing our total expenses and another card visual showing average monthly expenses. The data in our report is three years worth of expenses. It would be helpful if we could filter this data so we're not looking at it all at once. For example, let's say we want to see how much we spent on software in the year 2021. To do that, we need to create two slicers, one that allows us to filter the category and another that allows us to filter the year. We'll start by going over to the visualizations pane. Here we see all the different types of visuals we can add to our report. The slicer is the visual with a funnel symbol. If we click on that, back on our report page, we see that Power BI added a blank slicer. To make this a category slicer, we just need to add the category field to it. So over to the right in the fields pane, we'll click to expand expenses, then click the checkbox next to category. And back in our report, the slicer now shows a list of all the expense categories. Let's make that a little larger so we can see all of the categories. Next, we need to add a year slicer. Instead of creating the slicer from scratch, we'll just click copy and then paste. This creates a copy of our category slicer on top of the original. Now we'll go over to the visualizations pane and under field, we'll delete category. Then in the fields pane, click to expand the date table and click the checkbox next to year. And back over in our slicer, we see the list of years. Let's resize that, then drag it down below our category slicer. Now that we have our category and year slicers, to see our expenses for software in 2021, all we need to do is click software in the category slicer and 2021 in the year slicer. Our report now shows our software expenses for 2021. What if we want to see expenses for more than one category at a time? For example, what if we wanted to view our expenses for conference and travel to get a picture of what we spent for out of town events? First, let's uncheck software. Then all we need to do is hold down the control key when clicking the checkboxes. So we'll hold down control, then click conference and travel. And now our charts show expenses for conference and travel. Holding down control to select multiple options is how a slicer works when we first create it. But Power BI allows us to change this. In the visualizations pane, click on the format tool and make sure visual is selected. Then click slicer settings and selection. Here we have three options and we can see multi-select with control is turned on. We'll turn that off then go back over to our category slicer. Now let's say we want to add training. We can just click the checkbox next to training without having to hold down control. I think not having to hold down control when selecting multiple options is the best choice. First of all, if you're on a desktop or laptop, it makes using the report easier because we only need a mouse and we don't need to use the keyboard at all. Secondly, if the slicer is set to multi-select with control, anyone viewing the report on a mobile device won't be able to select multiple options because they won't have a control key. So I'd recommend turning it off when you create a slicer. Back over in the format tool under slicer settings and selection, we also have an option to show select all. If we click that and go back to our category slicer, we see a new select all option at the top of the list. Clicking that selects everything in the slicer. This makes it easy to select a large number of options without having to click them one by one. This is especially useful if you want to select all options except one or two. For example, if we want to see everything except for subcontract labor, after clicking select all, just click subcontract labor to unselect it. And now our visuals show expenses for everything except subcontract labor. This is much easier than having to select each option one at a time, especially if you have a long list of options. The other selection option Power BI gives us for slicers is single select. When we turn that on, the other two options disappear. And over in our category slicer, we can now only select one category at a time. I think single select has limited use since it makes the slicer very one dimensional. If you can think of a good use for a single select slicer, let me know what it is in the comments below. I'd be interested to hear. For our report, we don't want single select, so let's turn it off. And doing that restores our settings to the way we had it before so that multi select with control is turned off and select all is turned on. Now that we've looked at a few features of slicers, let's take a look at the different types of slicers in Power BI. 
First, we have the text slicer. Text slicers contain data that is text. That means anything other than numbers or dates. Our category slicer is an example of a text slicer. When we first create a text slicer, it displays what's called a list layout. And that's what we see here, all of our categories in a list. For the list layout, if we make the slicer shorter than the list of options, a scroll bar appears. Now we can change from the list layout to a drop-down layout. To switch to the drop-down layout, hover over the category slicer, click the down arrow in the upper right, and choose drop-down. This collapses all of the options into a drop-down bar, making the slicer much more compact. We can then resize it, and that opens up a lot of space in our report. Clicking the drop-down shows us the first few options, and we can use the scroll bar to see the rest. If we click Health Insurance and collapse the drop-down, we see that the drop-down tells us we've selected health insurance. If we select more than one option, the drop-down will display the words multiple selection. Now, one of our slicer has a lot of options. Scrolling through a long list of options to find the ones we want can be a real pain. Fortunately, Power BI allows us to add a search function to a text slicer. Let's create another slicer, this time for vendors. First, click on a blank area of the report to make sure nothing else is selected, and click the slicer icon in the visualizations pane. Then, in our expenses table, click the checkbox next to vendor. Here in our report, we have our new vendor slicer. Now we're only seeing two vendors and there should be more. The reason is that the selections in our category slicer are filtering the options we see here. So before we go any further, let's clear the selections in our category slicer. Then let's switch our vendor slicer to the drop-down layout. Drag the handle to make it smaller and we'll move it up under our category slicer. To add the search function, all we need to do is hover over the vendor slicer, click the three dots in the upper right, then click search. Or as long as we have the slicer selected, we can just press Control F. Now when we click on the drop-down, we see a search box at the top. Let's say we want to find subcontractor 2 in the list of vendors. We can type that into the search box. Or if we just type sub, Power BI reduces our list of options to show only the options that contain sub. And here we see the options for our three subcontractors. If we click subcontractor 2, now our report only shows data for subcontractor 2. One thing to know about the search box is that it's not case sensitive. For example, if we type big in all lowercase, Power BI shows us the options where big is capitalized. So we can see that the search function is very flexible. Now, if we don't clear the search box, what we typed into the search box will stay there and it will continue to reduce the options in that slicer until we clear it. To clear the text in the search box, as well as any selections we made, hover over the slicer and click the eraser icon. Another type of slicer is the numeric slicer. Numeric slicers contain numbers, whole numbers or decimal numbers. Our year slicer is an example of a numeric slicer. Numeric slicers offer the same list and drop-down layouts that we've already seen in the text slicer. The one difference is that numeric slicers do not have the search function. That would be really helpful, especially if we had a long list of numbers, but Power BI just doesn't offer search for a numeric slicer. Now, one feature we didn't talk about yet is sorting the slicer options. When we first create a slicer with a list or drop-down layout, the options are sorted in ascending order. For numbers, like in our year slicer here, that means they're sorted low to high. But let's say that for our year slicer, we want to show the most recent year first. To do that, just click on the three dots, choose sort, then click sort descending. And we see that our list now starts with the most recent year. In addition to the list and drop down layouts, numeric slicers also give us three additional options between, less than or equal to, and greater than or equal to. If we choose between, our year slicer now has two text boxes with a slider. If we click and drag the left handle on the slider, it changes the number in the left text box. And if we click and drag the right handle on the slider, it changes the number in the right text box. As we move the slider, we see this filtering our data. We can also just type the year into the text boxes. If we type 2020 into the left text box, then click enter, Power BI automatically adjusts the slider to match what we entered. And it works the same for the other text box. We also have the other two layout options, less than or equal to and greater than or equal to. If we choose less than or equal to, we can only control the input for the right text box, and the left text box is disabled. If we choose greater than or equal to, we can only control the input for the left text box, and the right text box is disabled. Another type of slicer is the date slicer. To create a date slicer, click a blank area of the report, then click the slicer icon. In the date table, click the checkbox next to date. When we first create a date slicer, it uses the between layout, and we see two text boxes with a slider. Inside each text box is a date, along with a calendar icon that launches a date picker. Power BI allows us to type a date right into the text boxes. However, I'd recommend avoiding this because, well, it's pretty quirky. For example, 
If we click and drag to select the whole date to type over it, it won't let us. It stops after a single digit. If we try clicking and dragging from the other side, it ends up moving the entire slicer. The only way to really do it is to double click on each part of the date and change them one at a time. And that's really not very convenient. The better option is to use the date picker. If we click on the calendar icon that displays the date picker, the arrows to the right allow us to go forward or backward one month. If we click on the month year, the date picker switches to a year view, and now the arrows allow us to go forward or backward one year. Here, if we click on a month, the date picker switches back to the month view, and now we can select the day. Or we can use a slider to choose the date range. If we have a lot of dates, it can be difficult to choose a precise date with the slider itself. So here's a tip. Get as close as you can to the date you want using the slider. Then, click on the slider handle for the date you want to adjust and use your right and left arrow keys to move forward or backward one date at a time. If we click on the down arrow in the upper right, we also have the list and drop down layout options that we've already seen. And we have two options similar to the numeric slicer, except instead of being called less than or equal to and greater than or equal to, here in our date slicer, those options are called before and after. If we choose before, we can only control the input for the right text box and the left text box is disabled. And if we choose after, we can only control the input for the left text box and the right text box is disabled. Two new options are relative date and relative time. If we click relative date, our slicer changes to show a drop down with three options, last, next, and this, as well as a text box to enter a number and another drop down with a list of time periods. This allows us to choose a date range relative to today's date. For example, if we choose years from this last drop down, we can see the date range the slicer is using to filter the data. Here, it's showing a range going back one year from today. In other words, all of the data from the last 365 days. Now, if we choose the year's calendar option instead, the date range changes, and we see that the slicer is now using the dates January 1st to December 31st of the previous year. If we choose relative time, it works very similarly, except that the time period options change to minutes and hours. Now that we've looked at the different kinds of slicers in Power BI and some of their basic features, Watch this video next to learn about the truly powerful, more advanced features of slicers that are gonna make your reports 10 times better. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.